Secretariat was probably the greatest racehorse of modern day times. He was a great competitor. One of the marks of a great competitor, of course, in the horse world is a horse that can run without a challenge. And I think that in the Belmont Stakes, when the horse was able to win with a lead of 31 lengths, it just showed that the horse had a great desire to win. And he was often referred to as a horse that was truly invincible. Well, Secretariat had developed laminitis and even though Secretariat was invincible on the racetrack, or only defeated a few times in his life, he was unable to survive the challenge of having this disease. The damage to his feet was so great that they decided that they should put the horse to sleep for humane reasons, which oftentimes happens in many of the cases of laminitis. My name is Dr. Don Walsh. I'm a veterinarian in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm the head of the Animal Health Foundation, and our mission is to find the cause and the prevention of laminitis in horses. All horses are susceptible to laminitis. It doesn't matter if you're the greatest racehorse in the world or a backyard pony. It's the number two killer of horses in this country, but it's by far the number one cause of horses having extreme pain. Horses are unique in that they bear all of their weight on a single digit. The disease causes a separation of the bone inside of the horse's foot from the external hoof wall. It's extremely painful. It's probably the most painful disease that any animal has to endure. Inside the horse's hoof, attaching the bone to the external hoof wall are some structures called lamina. And it is the breakdown within these lamina which cause the bone to separate from the external hoof wall. We know that some things predispose horses to laminitis. Although we don't understand the triggering mechanism, we know that certain conditions can make a horse much more susceptible to the disease. The most common form is caused by horses over ingesting large amounts of grain. This causes problems in the intestinal tract and results in the horses developing the problem in their foot. Any time a horse has diarrhea or any kind of a large gastrointestinal disturbance, they can get laminitis. Mares that retain their placentas oftentimes um, will develop laminitis as the result of that. Any horse that runs a fever is susceptible to getting laminitis. We know that certain conditions such as ingesting large amounts of grass in the spring and the fall can predispose a horse to also get laminitis. And then we know that horses that are obese or overweight have much more of a tendency to develop the disease. Oftentimes, laminitis and founder are used interchangeably, two terms. Laminitis refers to the inflammation that occurs within the lamina. When the bone actually changes position in the foot, it's known as founder. And this is an old term that refers to an old mariner's term when the ship would go down. So when the bone starts to sink in the foot, that's when we say that the horse is actually foundered. It all starts with an inflammation in the lamina or laminitis. Well, I think when we look at horses and we watch them, and the reason people like them so much is they really have such a beautiful motion to running, to being free, and it's a spiritual thing almost that uh, people enjoy about horses. So when horses develop laminitis, of course, this damages their feet to the point that they're unable to move around. They can no longer experience the satisfaction that they get from staying in herds or together with other horses. They lose this. So aside from the pain that they experience in their feet and the suffering, there's also a mental part to this to the horse because losing their ability to flee or run has a great effect on their emotional stability. The real key to laminitis is to prevent it because the disease does so much damage to the horse's foot, they can never be the same. This is a CT scan of a horse's foot, the normal veins of a normal horse's foot. You can see that the veins cover the entire surface of the coffin bone and in the bottom of the foot as well. 
This is a CT scan of a horse with severe laminitis. You can see the massive amount of destruction of the veins in this horse's foot. The whole front part of the sole, they're gone, and the front of the foot. And this is from the pressure of the bone moving inside of the foot. Many horses that don't die of the disease continue to lead lives of pain and suffering as the result of the disease. Many of them are partially crippled for the rest of their lives. A number of horses do manage to survive the disease and go on to live normal lives. Understanding why some of them do and why some of them don't is still part of the mystery of the disease. It's a frustrating disease for both the owner and the veterinarian. In a survey that was taken of all the equine practitioners, this disease was listed the number one disease that needed more research done. The veterinarians uh, try different things. Not any one treatment seems to be successful. The owners feel helpless to help some of these horses. They don't know whether to continue to treat them or put them to sleep. There are certain breeds of horses which have more of a predisposition to laminitis. But there is no horse or no breed that is free from this disease. Regardless of the type of care that animals receive, the disease laminitis can strike at any time for any horse. Because of the incidence of laminitis and the pain that this disease causes, it motivated a group of horse people and myself to start the Animal Health Foundation in 1984, a nonprofit organization which is all volunteers. The board of directors meets annually and reviews research proposals and grants monies to different researchers. One of the major researchers that the Animal Health Foundation has funded since 1995 continually is Dr. Chris Pollitt. Dr. Pollitt has developed the Australian Equine Laminitis Research Laboratory and contributed more knowledge to the cause of laminitis than any other researcher in recent times. His work demonstrated that the bond between the external hoof wall and the bone inside of the horse's foot was being destroyed by the overactivation of an enzyme system. Now this enzyme system is necessary and there in the horse's foot to facilitate the normal growth of the foot. But when it's overactivated for a prolonged period of time, it allows the lamina to start to pull apart and break down. And that's what causes the actual painful part of laminitis. The exact trigger that causes this to occur is still not completely understood. But Dr. Pollitt's work has added a great deal of knowledge to how laminitis actually occurs. And I feel like in the future, his work will probably result in learning the exact triggering mechanism that causes this. Another researcher the Animal Health Foundation has funded for a number of years is Dr. Philip Johnson at the University of Missouri. Dr. Johnson's expertise is in the area of hormone-related laminitis, or laminitis that's related to the obese, overweight type horse. His research in the last few years has discovered an enzyme that is present within the fat cells of these overweight horses, which results in the conversion of the inactive form of cortisone to the active form. And this is thought to be one of the primary mechanisms in play which causes these overweight horses to develop this form of the disease. The form of the disease is more of a chronic form, reoccurring, often unpredictable, and when it will strike. These horses are also the same horses that seem to be very prone to develop grass laminitis from overeating lush grass in the spring and the fall of the year. The Animal Health Foundation is also funding a forage researcher named Catherine Watts in Center, Colorado. She became interested in laminitis when her own horses developed laminitis and she could find out very little information about what in the grass was causing this. Her work is designed to find and develop grasses and strains of grasses which are lower in a sugar called fructans which is responsible for the horses developing the laminitis. She also is trying to develop different techniques for 
managing pastures and managing horses on pasture to try and prevent the occurrence of this disease. So she and Dr. Johnson and Dr. Pollitt are all working together in this effort. If all of the people that love horses can unite together and help fund laminitis research, this can become a preventable disease. We feel like we have the right people in place at the right time. If we can secure adequate funding for them, we feel that this can become a preventable disease for the horse. My personal dream would be, once all the pieces of the puzzle are in place, that the knowledge that we've gained from this can be spread to all the horse people all over the world and laminitis can be one of these diseases that you only read about in textbooks that happened a long time ago and that isn't a problem anymore because we know the right things to do, the right ways to prevent it, and the horse no longer has to suffer from this disease. It'll take all of us who care about horses working together to help fund good laminitis research. Once we do this, I truly believe that laminitis can become a preventable disease. Now I invite you to take the lead. Join the Animal Health Foundation in its fight against laminitis. Let's free the horse of this disease. A limited edition 16 by 20 secretariat print by artist Helen Hayes is your gift with any donation of $250 or more. Donations may be sent to the Animal Health Foundation, 3615 Bassett Road, Pacific, Missouri, 63069, or call 636-451-5249, or visit our website at ahf-laminitis.org. All donations are tax deductible. On behalf of those who cannot speak, the Animal Health Foundation thanks you for your support.